and this is what we're going to be doing today uh, we'll try to look we we'll look into decoupling concurrency and business logic in order to make our testing uh, simpler and more on point we look in we're going to look into testing fiber coordination in particular how do we test a, um, a task where we have a set of fiber rather than a single fiber uh, cooperating with each other and then we look into time-based testing which is also a, a bit of a challenging one uh, which comes in when our uh, functions and tasks actually depend on the passing of time and finally uh, if we have time we'll try and test our server and again by server here what we mean is a two-way uh, is a fiber supporting two-way communication we have one defined in our project it's called it's under the server folder, it's called stat store. Uh, testing it should be very, very simple, but uh, if we have time, uh, then uh, we'll, we'll get there as well. So I'm gonna go back to our uh, testing view. Uh, here we are. So the first thing we'll do is we'll look into um, testing a very simple function that we defined in the concurrency util um, library, which is here. And in particular, I'm thinking about testing the uh, partition uh, partition method on channel. If you remember from the last session, what partition does is it takes in a predicate and then uh, and calls. It's a function we call. Uh, it's a method we call on a channel. And whenever we call partition on that channel, uh, depending on how the predicate evaluates on uh, values going through the channel, we uh, the values will be streamed into one of two channels. If the predicate passes, so if the result is true, then we publish to the past channel. Otherwise, we pa we publish to the failed channel. So we're gonna partition the data according to a predicate. So how can we how can we test this? So I'm going back to my uh, to my concurrency util uh, test. You're probably familiar with the um, this sort of um, uh, spec uh, writing that that uh, should remind you of. Uh, um, a, a style of writing test that comes, for example, from, from Ruby. Uh, and what we do is we can describe different components of our application. In particular, we start from the concurrency util, which is the library we're interested in testing, the module we're interested in, interested in testing. And we can describe channel uh, partition, which is the first method we're interested in. And we can give some sort of uh, scope to our test, um, making them nice to read as well. So whatever is in the context of describe concurrency util, util describe channel partition is going to be testing uh, this particular um, method on on channel. Uh, so all we need to do is we need to define to make our just to start with something very simple. We're going to define a channel that handles integers, and we are going to. Uh, try and see what happens when we call partition on it and we're gonna partition according to a very simple uh, to a very simple block meanwhile you can see every time I, I save uh, our terminal our guardian will refresh the status of our tests uh, so we know that uh, we cannot just call partition uh, without a block so we go we can go back to our concurrency util look at the signature for partition all we need is a predicate so let's provide a predicate to partition. And what we can do is we can do a very simple um, predicate where, where we um, split values between even and odd, for example. And so our test is going to be given a value v in the channel. We're going to test for v dot even. And then if the value is even, then we're going to go one way. Otherwise, we're going to go uh, into the fail uh, channel. And uh, as we know, we have to define two channels that get returned uh, by the partition function. One is going to be even, the other one is going to be odd. And now that we have these two channels, what we need to do is we need to actually publish some, some value into the channel. So we can do it like so. So I can do spawn2, and then we can go back and uh, simplify the test a bit. But what I can do is I can do, I can pass in a bunch of values, one, two, three. If, if we say we're gonna pass in the values from one to five, for example, and then for each value i, we're gonna do ch.send i, and this is gonna send values from one to five to the channel ch, and then there's gonna be a fiber that is 
invoked every time that there is, there is going to be running every time a value is passed through the through the channel ch so reading receiving on the on the ch channel and then partitioning events uh, messages based on the value uh, of each number so what do we expect uh, even and odd to look like after um, after the the value the values have been processed well we need to make sure that we are actually waiting long enough to see uh, to see this right so even should receive two values two and four odd should re should receive three values one three and five so what we can do is we can say we can write our expectation based on uh, on 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 this forecast of of what's gonna happen so even we can call even receive a couple of time and again we're going to be refactoring this in a minute so the first time we receive on uh, even that value should be two the second time we receive on even the value should be should be four uh, the other thing we need to make sure we do uh, which is going to be intriguing so in the order in which events get published i think uh, we'd like to receive on odd and the first value should be one. And then we're gonna have another value which will be three. And then we have another value which is five. We're gonna save and see what happens. Uh, actual value. Uh, I'm trying to interpret the, the error here. Mm, actual value same expected value undefined method same for in 32 should I just say equal rather than B hmm let me go back to the documentation for spec which I have somewhere I'm not gonna show it to you because it might be just a waste of time oh yes EQ is the one where we're looking for okay now we should be good. Looking at the tests, mm, things are being a bit too slow, which means that we are probably blocking and not actually receiving the values as we expect. Uh, there we go, zero failures, we made it. Okay, it just took a bit longer than I expected. Okay, let's try and see if this is actually what's going on or if we're just being lucky. So if I say odd receives value four rather than value three, let's, let's see if the, uh, if the test breaks as expected. Yes, you can see we uh, expected four, but we actually got three. And so we can see that we get a nice stack trace. I don't know how nice that is, but we get an, a stack trace and we know that there was an expectation of failed. Now I should change this to three. If you look at um, at this test, it might look a bit, uh, it might not look super um, intuitive to write in the sense that even though this works, if I if I were to remove the first line, for example, then I think we would be getting into a uh, situation where the, the test doesn't terminate. Uh, this is because by the definition of partition, partition is gonna distribute values um, as they come in and for each value that it publishes to one of the two channels it's going to wait for the value to be received on the other end which means that with the first value when we go ch.send1 um, we're going to send a value the, the, the partition um, the partition method is going to send the value the direction of the odd channel because odd is not listening to that uh, particular value we actually the, our execution gets stuck here on the receive and odd is never read so it's very important when we um, when we um, read values out of a, an output stream or a set of output stream that we actually care about the order in which values are published otherwise that will break our uh, our test so that's fundamental do we have any alternative that would make this uh, not necessary well, for example, we could uh, spawn uh, a bunch of different fibers to run the um, to run the expectation. That's also feasible. In that case, we wouldn't need to wait uh, for we didn't wouldn't need to wait um, or actually to care for the order in which things happen. But that's really 
uh, that kind of complicates our test a bit because if we are spawning fibers inside the test then we also need to wait for the fibers to complete it's something it's something we can actually do and it makes our um, our test a bit more robust so what I can do is I can do uh, I can have one fiber reading events out of uh, out of even and this becomes a bit more natural for the reader and we say we will have spawn uh, do even receive uh, on two and four and and with the validation on two and four and then we're going to have another spawn do on odd for one two sorry for one three and five we're almost there and this is it and now the question is well but how do we wait for the for the spawn fiber to to end because actually if i now run the test we're not going to run any uh we're not going to run any um expectation not even one this is because the test is going to get to the end of the execution and our spawn fiber uh, are gonna uh, hang there um uh, will be terminated because the test uh, got to got to the end so i'll show you let me show you something if i say put uh, done here and save and here i might have to rerun the guardian because it got stuck forever in a previous run i am not expecting to see uh, done being printed in this in this test this is because i expect the execution to go through the entire test without waiting for the spawn fiber to finish and just complete without uh, without uh, any expectation being run let's see if we get to the completion i just need to save here and let's see what value we get i'm expecting uh, one example zero examples, zero failures, uh, zero errors, and we're not seeing the, the, the done string being, being written. So what we can do instead is we can define a new auxiliary channel. We'll call it done because that's what it's gonna be about. And this is gonna be a channel of nil. And we're gonna receive two values in the in, at the level of the main fibers. So we're gonna do something like two times dot uh, sorry uh, done dot receive one value is going to come from the first fiber that does the validation so it's going to be done dot send new and the second one is going to come from the second fi fiber that runs the expectation so done dot send new i'm going to save now actually before before saving before running this again i'm going to also uh, print something before publishing the last done with odd uh, before uh, before sending the nil value so that you that you can verify that we're actually running the expectations as expected this is something you always want to verify that that especially when you're when you're testing fibers you want to make sure that you are indeed running expectations uh, because it can be the case that you think you're running expectation where where you're not really uh, running them you can see we're now printing done with odd so we are happy uh, the reason why we're not seeing um, a nice output here is because we haven't enclosed the expectation inside an it, uh, which is my bad. So I'm going to say that partition should send values. Well, partition values according to a predicate, which is a bit general. I I agree. And then we're gonna end this block down here. Uh, and now the output should be a bit nicer. Let's see. Not like this, like this. I'm saving. And now we should see some examples completing. And I can also remove the puts uh, inside it. There we go. Now we have one example. We are printing done with odd, which is great. It means that we are running the expectations indeed. So we are on the right path. So let's look at how we tested this. We defined a channel on which we're gonna, which is gonna be our channel under test. If you wish, we are gonna call the method we're testing on the channel. We are partitioning values depending based on uh, the values going through the, the channel being even or odd. 
And then what we do is we spawn a, a fiber that will just send a few sample values inside the channel. And then we have two fibers in this case because we're validating over two different uh, channels, the even and the odd channel, that um, verify the expectation on each one of the channel. Once we are done uh, with uh, validating the, um, the values that go through the, through the two partitions, we call done.send nil, which signals to the main thread that the validation has been completed. And at that point, uh, we know that the test is gonna end because our main thread is actually waiting for two uh, signals of uh, coming from the two different uh, partitions. I wanted to show you something else. If I now change this value to two, I'm on this line, I'm expecting two rather than three. I wanted to show you how the error gets the error gets displayed, which should now be uh, a bit more readable. So we have expected two, got three, and you can see that we have expectation uh, line 42, but also uh, concurrency util line 24, which is exactly where the error happened, right? So Crystal is doing a good job at telling us exactly where uh, the expectation failed. So I'm back into uh, I've fixed the test again. I seem to have to restart Guardian here. And now, so now we're, we're ready to, to move on. Uh, just a minor adjustment. We're calling dot even here. One of the nice things about uh, methods accepting blocks is that I can just pass them in with a shorthand syntax. So you can just uh, do ampersand dot even, and the test should still still run. 